We're continuing our Datamite uh, hardware demo here. And now we're going to the analog channels. There are 10 analog channels available, five here, five here. These are the zero to five volt channels, pressures, temperature, or could be temperatures and such. And, um, and also uh, weather is actually used on some of these channels. So uh, in this particular installation, we do have a weather station installed. Here's the recirculating fan. That's how you can tell this is a weather station. And two of these channels on analogs A are being used by barometer and humidity. So a breakout cable, this is what we call a breakout cable, a cable that goes in and breaks out the five channels available on B anyway into five individual channels. Now you can plug a pressure sensor, a temperature sensor, a position sensor, and such. And they're all color-coded, you can see here. they got different color-coded shrink tubing. And here, on analogs A, if you've got a weather station like we do, you only have three channels available to you. And you can see there's only three here. If you didn't have that weather station, you would have five channels available to you. And then you would use a breakout cable like this to get access to all five. So if you got a weather station, you want to make sure that you do not put the this type of breakout cable on analogs A because you could be getting a conflict because barometer and maybe your pressure sensor want to use the same channel. Just something to be aware of. A lot of times we'll mark this A and B on the breakout cables when we send it out that way. So anyway, this is for analog channels and a typical analog sensor would be like this pressure sensor here. Pressure sensor, you would plug in, like you can see right now, I'm going to plug in um, to this blue connector here. And I'm on analogs A, going into a blue, and I'm going to show you now in the software how this works. You go to your light specs, and you look down here, analogs A, and that's what it is, and it's blue right there. That is the channel right here, and it says just a standard 0 to 5 volts. This is the channel that signal is coming in on, and right now it's not even turned on, so I have to turn that on by doing that to have it come through, and I'm going to do that right now. All I have to do is just make that change, and I can go File, Save, Master Day Might Spec. If I, I could also have gone into current readings and backed out of the screen, it would ask me also then, do you want to save these changes? So anyway, but anyway, I've got that set up now. So now if I go into my current readings here, and this is kind of a good troubleshooting trick, it's checking the COM port, and when it finds a COM port, it's going to come up and say, have been established, and here is my analogs A. Now, good troubleshooting thing to make sure it's right is I'm going to go over here, I'm going to slide this out of the way here, and you see how it's saying 0.48 volts when I got it plugged in? When I disconnect this, it goes to zero. So you can see right here it's going to close to zero. When I plug it back in, it comes back. This is the single best way to make sure that you know which channel is which sensor. By plugging and unplugging them and making sure you get a response on the right channel that you're expecting here on the screen. Now a couple other inputs you can have is sometimes you want a recording switch. This switch here, it's a handheld switch, that you can plug into the switch channel here. This is for a dynamometer. Vehicles would use a switch for something different. But what this switch is used for to start and stop recording on the computer, you press the F1 key and F2 key. But you can also use this switch, it's optional, and start and stop with it. Now, if you're going to use this switch, something you should be aware of is you have to turn that switch on. And there's not a channel in the list of channels here. Uh, this was a, a later option, so it's right here, recording switch. You have to set it up here to either allow the switch to be used or do not allow it to be used. Here's the back of the Datamite 3, 
and we have on this data my three four internal thermocouple channels four thermocouple connectors here thermocouples are temperature sensors they're very inexpensive sensors but the signal conditioning inside the box is fairly precise and has to amplify things a lot so it's a there's a fair amount of money in there to handle the thermocouples we have four basic types of thermocouples we have our head temperature which this would go under the spark plug you want to be careful of this that this can break if you're if you are rough with it so make sure that when you tighten up the spark plug, you're not twisting and bending this around but this goes under the spark plug generally for cart motors like brakes and stuff obviously you can't use a tapered seat plug with that it's got to be a flat seat we have our exhaust temperature which is like this and you won't be able to see it here but it's got a little tiny exposed tip the sheath is here and then the little bead on the end is exposed this is a very fast responding temperature sensor we use it for exhaust to sense quick changes then we have what we call our fluid temp sensor it's all covered here so we can't get any leak fluid leak back through this it's not going to be significant because the fluid does not change temperature very quickly we can use a covered tip and this is a little more durable and stuff and I should have showed you this, but they just plug right in like that. So you plug them in. You may need an extension cable, depending on where this box is from the engine. These are four-foot leads, which are the shortest leads we have. And then we have uh, our air temp thermocouple. The air temp thermocouple is used for, and you'll say, well, that's just a crimp on the end. What is that going to do? That's actually what a thermocouple is. is. These two dissimilar metals in the wire touching each other make the thermocouple connection, which is enough to sense heat. And you would put this, the air temp thermocouple, in the airstream before the carburetor or throttle body. You want to make sure this is far enough back from the throttle body or the carb in particular so that the blowback of fuel doesn't get to this. Otherwise, you're not going to get an accurate temperature sensing. Uh, if you get fuel on it's going to sense it too cool this is used for a more precise wide open throttle correction factor so you can get your power corrections done right the weather here is going to take temperature barometer and humidity the barometer at the box is the same as at the engine the humidity at the box is almost identical to what they at the engine the temperature at the box however can be significantly different than what's over at the engine and that's why this is a better way of doing it but if you don't do it then we got to use the temperature at the box for your weather corrections